One more. I think we have another. Oh no, we're empty. Let's take one of these. This is why shooting is fun. You know, you just go. Okay, let's not mess up our little group here. But uh. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to chat about an essential skill for any long range shooter, precision rifle style shooter, and that is the ability to spot your own hits. Now, to be able to spot for yourself is an essential skill because one, you'll be able to pick up on those misses. If you don't see where that miss lands as a result of bad recoil or whatever the case may be, bad follow through, or you're moving on to your next target already, then your next shot, if you have to re-engage that target, is going to be another first round effectively because you're still then guessing. Whereas if you spot that miss or you spot how the plate reacts, you'll be able to make a correction based on that. And that is exactly what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Now, our video is brought to us by our friends over at Modular Driven Technologies. You guys have seen this little 20 inch 6.5 Creed of mine in their ESS chassis. To shop chassis systems like this, head on over to mdttag.com. Anyway, okay, so what we're gonna do, we have a target out at 350 yards-ish. I just zeroed this rifle on paper. Now, I haven't shot out to distance and I've changed some things up on the rifle, so our data is gonna be different. We've got a different mount. Uh, we're running a suppressor this time. So I'm gonna try to show you exactly how I find that impact point there. Now, I sort of know what I need to dial. It's gonna be about 1.5 MRAD or MULS. Um, moles as YouTube subtitles often say and unfortunately I was gonna run the trigger cam unit as you guys will see in this picture but the battery died on me so we're gonna have to do old school I'm gonna try show you guys an angle like we did on the Prestige sites where I sort of set up the camera behind me and that you can see that bullet running towards the target and I'm gonna talk you through what I'm thinking as I engage the target and what lessons we have in that right without further ado I'll see you after the intro, and we're gonna make some bang bang. Right, so we've set up to our target. Uh, let me just try and find it here. There we go. You should be able to see my suppressor in this sort of corner of the other shot we've got going on here. So basically what we're gonna do, I'm gonna dial what I think my elevation holds should be according to my ballistic calculator, which is 1.5 MRAD. Okay, I'm pretty much just gonna hold a little bit to the left maybe because we've got some wind coming from this direction, which is strange because we don't often have wind from that direction at this range. Right, let's see everything's going. Okay, so I'm gonna hold a half a MRAD and make sure everything is 100% like squeezing the trigger nice and slowly. Everything's good, breathing, position, everything's good because here it's vital that you squeeze off a good shot because if you don't, then you'll have bad information to make your correction on. Okay, well, we hit that 100% dead center. So the reason I can tell that is how the plate actually moves. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can hit the little one for you guys and maybe we can see that a little bit better on the, on the other angle. Oh, off to the left. So now I know I held too much wind. I can quickly make that correction and... Okay, and... Okay, in the middle of that one. Right, so it's very important to note actually how the plate behaves or where you hit. So once you've missed to the left like I did on that second shot, it was quite easy for me to measure that using my reticle and actually just bring the scope over a little bit. And I know that next shot, assuming I do my part on the trigger pull, it should be money. Let's step things out a little bit. Let's go up to 490, I believe, and uh, see what we can do at the back there. All right, I've changed my position up a little bit. What's nice about this target, I should be able to show you guys actual pictures of the target because it's just been painted. So it's super fresh. Uh, I'm gonna add, uh, I haven't looked at my ballistic calculator at all for this, so I'm gonna add about 
seven clicks and hopefully it gets us there if not we should be able to just use the information as is the point of this video to make the corrections and get ourselves on target and once we've got that we can go back and recalibrate our ballistics app as we do in this video right so i've dialed 2.2 130 grain eldm as you guys can see down here at about 28 so 2.2 should get us there i'm gonna hold about a half a mole for wind and let's see what we get okay over the top okay over the top so i'm gonna take let me just check that ding, 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 ding. i can take about four off this about so 1.7 let's see what that does but the wind looked good because i could actually see the bullet flying and that's something we'll chat about just now Okay, so because it's a freshly painted target, I can see that bullet hit sort of low and to the left. And I can use my reticle now to see, okay, if I split that difference, I need to add back about two clicks. And my wind call was maybe a little bit too aggressive because I can see now where that bullet hit and it hit to the left. So I'm holding a little bit too much wind. So I'm going to take just a tad off my wind call. Um, although I feel on my body now the wind is pushing a little bit more um, You guys can't see it, but I've got this dead cat on the other camera um, And I can see it moving a little bit more But nonetheless, I'm gonna take a little bit off that wind call just a tad and we should hit in the middle of the plate now Let's put another round on that guy Hi. Short stoked it. Okay, do we have more ammo? This is turning into just a fun little shoot. So I am hitting a little bit high. We've got more ammo. But I mean, we are absolutely nailing that plate. And if this was a match environment, I'd be super happy with that. So we've got one, two, three touching, one out, and that last one was a little bit low. So let's head on up to the target and I can chat you guys through what exactly just happened. Oh wait, one more. I think we have another, oh no, we're empty. Let's take one of these. This is why shooting is fun, you know? You just go, okay, let's not mess up our little group here. But, uh... <laughs> Let's see where that one went. Uh, that's right in the rest of the group. Okay, okay, so we've driven up to the target. I'm gonna take you over there now and sort of chat you through it. So very importantly, that first round I put up here, I actually spotted my own bullet trace through the scope. Now, if you shoot a lot, and especially if you're shooting slower calibers like a 22 Rumfire or 308, or even this 20 in 6.5 Creedmoor at 2,800 feet per second, if the conditions are good and the sun's behind me, I can generally pick up on my trace quite easily. And I could see that bullet zip straight over the top and I think it actually went in between the straps. Let's head on over and chat about this target. So our shooting position is pretty much 100% that way. And our first bullet zip through here. Let me just see if I'm doing this correctly for you. Right, so then I made the adjustment. I took some elevation off and then we hit there. Then we hit there. And then sort of I just went for it as you saw. And we had one, two, three, four. And there's two on top of each other. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to make sure you're using the information correctly that you're seeing downrange. And oh, let me just get you there and not fall off the front of the bucky. Bucky is our word of the day. It's a truck, B-A-K-K-I-E, Bucky. So that's what we refer to as our trucks in South Africa. You say, hey, bring me Bucky. And that means, hey, bring, bring the truck over here. Anyway, so that's kind of the process how to make sure you're using the information you're seeing downrange. Now, very importantly, what I really want to chat to you guys about is the following. Let me walk back over to this target and not have this camera fall over. Right, we're gonna do that. If by any means you see me shouting and it goes black, then you know it was a disaster. So when we're shooting steel, you can see how the plate reacts. For example, if I shoot it here, it's gonna swing like that. And that is something you can look for when you're doing long range shooting. So judging by how the plate is swinging, oftentimes 
plates at matches will be will be on one strap and then you can get even more because then that, it allows it to twist better now generally what I found is it's great when you're shooting a fresh plate and it's being painted such as this so you can see where the actual bullet hits but as soon as one or two guys have shot a stage this thing's pretty much all black and you can't see much then you really have to go off once you're hitting the plate how is it actually reacting so generally a shot in the middle would push your plate straight back like that in some cases you'd almost see it appear to jump back like that then you know you're pretty much hitting it rock solid so importantly what i try and do is especially if the if the match director has hung plates on one strap is to note sometimes you'll see the okay this one's all rusted up but sometimes the plates will be freshly painted at the back and then you can sort of tell in which direction the plate is swinging if it's swinging pretty violently just take your time wait for it to settle down more than likely you'll have enough time to put another round on there because single strap targets tend to swing quite a bit when you shoot them so i have a tendency of trying to just shoot them again and i've missed some shots by just getting that timing slightly wrong so that should give you a good idea of what to look for how plates are reacting i'm gonna remake this video for you guys with the trigger cam down the line maybe we can use this to sort of dovetail with our MRAD explained videos. I also want to thank everybody for the insane growth the channel has experienced over the last month. You know guys, I come out and make these videos for you if a thousand of you watch them. And we've had this month over a million views in one month, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm like, I'm so humbled that you guys choose to watch my videos. I'm just a dude from Cape Town that likes to shoot and make content for you guys. So thank you so much for everybody supporting the channel. Anyway, Click down here if you're not subscribed already watch one of my latest videos up here My favorite videos are down here and if you want to support the channel, we'd really appreciate that you can click down here I will see you guys in the next one stay safe and uh, happy shooting